Um, obviously, really excited about the beginning and start uh, of practice. Um, the NCAA changed the rules uh, two years ago where we can have 42 days out from our first practice, we can have 30 days of practice. Um, so they made it similar to the kind of spring football um, model. Uh, but uh, we can officially start practice Friday, October 3rd, and we have to take 12 days off in those uh, 42 days we have allotted. But um, obviously really excited about uh, what we have here in store. Um, I, I think we've had a total of 14 scholarship players um, in my first two years here, and we actually have 12 now. So we also actually matched the total of the first two years with this one year. So um, the biggest thing that I think changes about our team is, is two things. First and foremost, we actually have experience for the first time um, in my tenure here. And along with that experience, we actually have size. Um, I know I've said this before, but we go from having three guys on our team who are six, seven or above to having uh, seven guys on our team that are six, seven or above. We go from having one guy on our team that's six, nine or above to having four guys on the team who are six, nine or above. So I'm really excited about what we can do. And I think it's going to help our players individually, and it's obviously going to help our team individually now that there'll be competition um, for those minutes on the front line. Um, but the second thing is I just think allows for simulation and practice where when we go play at Kentucky, we go play in LSU, that's the first time our guys have played against size is in a game instead of in a uh, game again, excuse me, day-to-day -day competition and practice. So um, we're really looking forward to it. I think uh, Fred Thomas has done a phenomenal job for us here in this offseason, and I would be surprised and shocked if he isn't a first-team all-SEC defensive guy. Uh, we uh, will put him on the best perimeter player for the opposing team every time, and I think he'll do a fantastic job of, of showing his defensive prowess. Um, obviously, we need um, Gavin Ware and uh, Chicken to continue to make strides in their game. Um, but the thing that I like the most about our team at this point in time is the fact that nothing is promised um, because of the competition for minutes. Um, so if you've been here for two years, whether you're Chicken or Gavin or Fred Thomas, there's actually competition for those minutes now. And I think in order for us to make a jump as a program, uh, that's what we need. With Travis and Palou, obviously you mentioned they made a big transformation in the last year or so. How, how big is it now to have them from making the team better in practice to actually knowing they're going to be on the court this year and playing big minutes? I know technically those two guys are newcomers. Um, but they're unique and really they're not new, newcomers to the program. So the first time they set foot on the court will be the first time they actually play basketball. Um, but they have been here the whole year, and in Travis' case, the whole semester. So I think that benefits them as far as like not being true newcomers. I, I think with Travis Daniels, first and foremost, he's probably our most skilled guy on the team uh, besides maybe I.J. Reddy. He can do so many different things, and he's a legitimate 6'8 guy, and he has a body to compete in the SEC right away. We just need him to be an aggressive guy. Um, he's such a good person that he tends to be passive at times, and he wants to make sure everybody likes him. Um, but we need him to be aggressive because when he's, I told him, trying to explain to him, when he's aggressive, he's helping the team because he's such a good person, he's going to make the right decision once that time comes when he gets into the paint. So um, he's probably our most talented guy. Does that mean he's our best player? That remains to be seen. But as far as like if you went and watched him in a practice or an individual workout, you say, hey, he might be their best player. So I think that helps our team. Uh, with Lou Endoy, just having the size um, that we haven't had in the past and the fact that he's done a really good job in the weight room and adding strength. He hasn't had added as much weight as we would like. Um, he's got tremendously stronger here in this year sitting now. So we'll actually have a guy that can go up and challenge shots at the rim and finish at the rim. And I think with, with Falou Endoy and Oliver Black at those two positions, the five and the four, I think you can do anything you want to as far as ball screen D because of those guys' mobility and ability for them to move their feet. you talk about the other new covers that you've got and what you've seen from them and work out? Yeah, I think uh, Maurice Dunlop, first and foremost, uh, chose to be here both summers, and I think that move for him has been really beneficial. Um, he's gotten so much bigger and stronger in the offseason that it, uh, he's really a kid that's worked hard for everything he's got, and I've been surprised by the way he's dedicated himself to basketball here in this offseason. Um, he's a guy that can make a difference on our team because of his ability to shoot the basketball, but the thing we've come to find out with, with Dunlop is he's a determined worker. Uh, he's coming here almost every day and got up shots on his own, got on the shooting gun. 
Um, so he's a guy that's put in the time and effort in order to get better. Um, I think he's a guy that can get by people. He has a tremendous burst. His thing will now, once he gets into the lane, this will be the first time he's had to finish against size and make the decision whether I try to finish against that size or whether I dump down and make the right decision. So we've got to get him to the point where he feel, feels comfortable doing those things because he's been really good as far as like getting by his man and getting to the lane. Um, I think Demetrius Houston is going to be a fantastic player for us. Uh, he's even better than I thought he would be. Um, he's 6'7", he's a legitimate three-man, and I just don't see anybody on the court that's going to be more athletic than him. He's a guy that can finish at the rim against anybody. Um, I think as he learns the game of basketball and continues to increase his skill level, I don't see how he doesn't end up being an all-SEC type caliber guy uh, because there's nobody with that size and length and athleticism um, as far as opposing teams. Um, I, I think if you start to look at Oliver Black, he's a little bit in the same situation that Fred Thomas was in two years ago um, because he was trying to get some things done academically with the eligibility center. He didn't get here at all in the summertime. So as now, is he behind everybody else because of that? Can he catch up with everybody else because he didn't have the summer that those guys had in front of him? Um, so he's done a great job here. He's a tremendous worker. Um, every sprint drill, he wins all our sprint drills at 6'9". Um, he's a guy that's lapping people in conditioning. Um, he's gotten so much bigger and stronger just in the little time that he's been here. His thing will be like, can he catch up to everybody else at this point in time? But I tell you what, he's putting in the effort to do that. And I just think with big guys these days, if you can get guys to just like play hard and give an effort, then they're going to get better. And I think that's what he's going to do. So I'm excited about him. Um, I'm only sure I'm not missing anybody. We already talked about Falou, we talked about yeah. Travis. Oh, Johnny Zapardo was a guy that just, the thing about Johnny Zapardo is that if you don't think he's good, just ask him. Um, <laughs> he's got a tremendous amount of confidence in himself and in his game, and that's what you want. You, you want a guy that goes out there and thinks that he can be successful at this level and play against anybody. And obviously he's had success at the junior college level, leading this team to a national junior college title, the first time ever in the state of Mississippi. So he's a guy that brings an edge um, to it, and I think he's got a skill level. He's similar to Colin as far as like his ability to pass and shoot and dribble, but I think what sets him apart is the fact that he's got a competitive chip on his shoulder, and he's not afraid to go in there and mix it up with his back to the basket and get offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. He's just a highly competitive kid, and the reason he's highly competitive is the fact that he thinks he's pretty damn good. <laughs> You mentioned Demetrius Houston, how he could potentially all this, be an all SEC. How far away is he from that? Is he really raw? You talk about athleticism, I've seen that. But how far away is he getting close to that? Athletically, he, he's not far. I mean, he's right there with anybody in the SEC that we've seen so far. Um, he's, a, he's an unbelievable athlete. He'll do some things on the court. He reminds me at the same stage of K.J. McDaniels when I was at Clemson a guy who came in as a raw athlete that turned into a really good basketball player. Um, so if you ask me to compare Demetrius Houston to K.J. McDaniels, I say right now if you want to have a jumping contest, you're splitting hairs. Um, but as far as like uh, Demetrius Houston being physically bigger and stronger, coming in as a freshman, there's no question that Demetrius Houston is bigger and stronger. But if you talk about a guy that can move laterally and also has the other athletic ability as far as like running and jumping, I think he's right there. The difference right now as far as Demetrius Houston is like, will he be able to pass it, shoot it, and dribble at the level of his athleticism? So that's what's got to catch up. His skill level's got to catch up to his athleticism. His athleticism is really, really high at this point in time. But, you know, he's, I don't know if it's something that's going on in the water over there at Carver <laughs> High School, but those are the two best athletes that I've ever been around between Chicken Sword and Demetrius Houston. There's been, I guess, defense is really keying in on Gavin, shutting off the post game, and now you have some legitimate threats out there to, to kind of take a little bit of pressure off of him. Is that something that kind of excites you a little more, that you have a lot of pressure off of Gavin? He can be a lot more productive, I guess, now that he doesn't have double teams every single time he's out there? Well, you know, shooting is still a concern for us. Um, I, I think right now we have options to not play a lineup where we're always pigeonholed as far as like our shooting ability. I think now that we have some options with some basketball players, we don't have to have a team out there when teams are not guarding us because of our lack of shooting that we can put a lineup out there by putting the Travis Daniels out there, putting the Maurice Dunlap out there, putting the IJ Reddy out there, guys that can make shots. 
to take some of that pressure off of Gavin Ware. Um, so that's going to be key for us. But the thing when it's all said and done is like individual player development. Um, and it's twofold. We have to make sure as coaches that we're doing everything we can to make Gavin Ware a better basketball player. But Gavin Ware has to take what we're doing with him and the time that we can be with him and doing it on his own. So that's always the key. Guys have to make progression in the game. And I always say this, we get two hours a week that we can work with our guys in the offseason. And if you think you're going to become a better basketball player in those two hours a week, you're sorely mistaken. It's kind of like homework, all right? You, you have in class that you're there for an hour. You probably need to spend an hour or two outside of that classroom on homework. And so what those guys do with their homework is the key is whether those guys get better or not. I think we got some things around Gavin Ware finally now that will give him some help, not having to always be the guy to get every offensive rebound, every defensive rebound, guard the other team's best player in the post. We got some guys that can alleviate some of those situations. But at the end of the day, the Gavin Ware put in the work in order for him to become a better basketball player. It's not just going to magically happen because we have better players around him. He's got to make sure he still did the work himself too. You mentioned uh, Craig and Demetrius being two of the most athletic guys been around much. Having those two on the floor at the same time then it seems like it would be pretty beneficial for you. Yeah, and it's, it's once again it boils down to that package of what we want to do. I, I think in order for us to continue to move forward and progress as a team, that Chicken's going to have to play some point for us. Um, and what I mean by that is I don't think that we can have a steady diet of guys like Trevante out there, Chicken, and Demetrius because both all those guys are not great shooters. All those guys are great athletes. But I think at some point in time, we've got to have a situation we got chicken at the point so we can play Demetrius more. But I don't think we can have all those guys out there who are not your so-called shooters. Um, so in order for us to progress as a basketball team, we need to be able to slide chicken over to the point some and be a bigger, stronger team and then use his ability to break down the defense. But he can only break down the defense if he's got guys out there who like Fred Thomas and Travis Daniels and Maurice Dunlap who can make shots. And I would throw Johnny Zapardo in that group as well, too. So what I'm saying is we got to make sure we're putting out the right package out there to make sure our guys are being successful. Have you seen the guys doing their homework, so to speak? Have they been in the gym extra than the, that separate two hours or just the necessary? Well, that would be against the rules, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, all you can do is by what your guys say. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, you something you harp on, something you always talk about. But whether they're physically doing it, we can't check that off the list. Right. Um, but uh, we've got, you know, unbelievable facilities here. I always say we want to make sure we're giving our guys 24-hour access to get better, okay? And so they have that here with the Mize practice facility. So we want to make sure they're taking advantage of that. How important is it for those three juniors in Trevante Bloodman to kind of take the role as leaders uh, for, this, for this team? Well, Michael, to me, that's the whole key to our season. Um, I have every... Um, confidence that we're going to be a better basketball team. There's no ifs, ands, and doubts about that. We're going to be a better team. We're going to win more ball games. But for us to take that next step as far as like challenging for postseason play, whether it be NIT or NCAA, we're going to have leadership inside the locker room. I think these past two years, I've been the unquestioned leader. And, and so that's all fine and dandy, but at some point in time, the things that I'm saying, the things that I'm harping on, is it being carried into the locker room when the coaching staff is not around? And we need somebody, okay? And it just can't be veteran guys. I think sometimes people get wrapped up in like, this guy's a senior, so he's a leader. No, that's not true, okay? We got to make sure there's somebody in the locker room that's making sure that they're enforcing the same things that the coaching staff is enforcing that I want in order for us to take that next step as a basketball team. So if I'm the only leader on the basketball team, we're going to be better. There's no question about it. But can we be as good as we can be? No. We need somebody inside the locker room reiterating the same thing that I'm saying. Is that a role that Rockwell Johnson can play for you? Rockwell doesn't talk very much, if you hadn't noticed, um, <laughs> from the press conferences that he has. But you know what Rockwell does? He has respect of the team. Um, because Quez is a tough kid. He's the type of guy, if you're going down a dark alley, you want Rockwell with you. Um, so he's the type of guy that commands people to respect because of how hard he plays and how tough of a kid he is. Um, but to, I don't know as far as like a guy being a vocal leader if he fits that role. Um, but he's a guy with, as far as like doing what he's supposed to do as far as playing hard and being a tough kid. He's actually a model for that. But I don't know if he's that guy yet.